a beautiful California sunset. And I've got just one thing on my mind. Can I really ride my Hayabusa 2,000 miles to my destination? Let's go. Thank you for stopping back, Cycle Drag Universe. Yes, I'm having some crazy, crazy thoughts. It's my birthday, all the stars are aligning, and I got the time, and I wanted to do something a little wild. My longest ride ever on the Suzuki Hayabusa is a trip to Martin, Michigan, US 131, for the big Dash for Cash Super Sled Shootout. Well, the only difference is last time I did it, I was in central Pennsylvania. Now I'm in southern California. Can I really do this? Can I really go all the way to this race on my Suzuki Hayabusa? I do want to mention one thing and explain why this is a bit intimidating, okay? I talked to my friend Tony Ruggiero, who's a Nitro Harley rider, and he told me, he's like, hey, if you don't go a thousand miles a day, don't even post it. It's embarrassing. <sighs> let me let me tell you something. This is a Suzuki Hayabusa. This is not a bagger, okay? I've been 650 miles on this motorcycle. I am no iron butt supreme, but I'm a pretty athletic guy. I stretch, I'm nimble. 650 miles on this Busa will tire you out. So 2,000 miles, whew, it's, it's a little daunting. I'm gonna have to strategize. And when I say tire you out, as you can see, I don't have any bags on this. So I'm just gonna go with a book bag. I'm gonna pack as light as possible. That takes a toll on your back. You get some saddle sores, you get some vibration sores, a little concerned about what type of weather I may encounter. Uh, it looks mild for the most part, but you never do know. And if I'm gonna take this northern route, it could get, it could get cold. So um, the book bag fills up quick, is what I'm trying to say. And every single ounce you bring is one more back ache. So it's tough, it's a challenge. But you know what, like I said, here on Cycle Drag YouTube, we're going for it and we're bringing you with us. Well, thank you guys for all the birthday wishes and I'm thinking of losing my mind. Boost is ready to go. I'm feeling kind of limber. I think I can do it. Let's do it. This is not going to be easy, but I love a challenge. And you know what ACDC said, it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. Before we take off, let's take a look at how I packed. And that's a challenge. The goal is to fit everything in one book bag. The goal is to be as light as possible, but I am going to be gone for quite some time and I need some things. Of course, that starts with full leathers, gloves, an extra shield so I have the option to go clear when it gets dark out. Going to wear the boots. Bring a pair of flip-flops, that'll help. Most important thing, my helmet, of course. The Cycle Drag stickers, all the equipment that I will need to do videos and cover the race on the Cycle Drag YouTube channel. Some clothes, heavy dose of underwear and socks. We can make the rest last. We can do laundry if we have to. Retainer, toiletries. And of course, the CycleDrag.com decals. Now, I am truck shopping out there, so I'm a little conflicted about this. I have this. four brand new tie-down straps, but I'm not so sure it's worth the wait. It's probably better to just buy them there if I get the truck, uh, borrow them off a friend, do whatever I gotta do. I'm not so sure it's worth taking that extra weight a thousand plus miles. All right, guys, update. After all that, had a little bit of an emergency come up. I lost some time, and unfortunately, there just wasn't enough time to get to the race, so I had to hurry up, book a last-minute flight. I do hope to make that trip eventually, and I need, I need some help from you. One thing I was a little bit worried about is my backpack was, was super heavy. I don't want to go that far with the backpack. Are there good saddlebags for the Hayabusa? Or, you know, maybe I just need to do it when I'm not covering a race so that I can take an ultra light load. But if you can help me out with that, I appreciate it. Anyhow, we're going to Chicago and we're still going racing. We're not gonna let this stop us. And we will make that Busa trip in the future. Might even have to do it coast to coast.
All right, this is a big day. We got a lot going on. So we're actually gonna break the diet. McDonald's deluxe breakfast. Can't beat that though. Take a look at this. Look at all this stuff you get. We got pancakes, bacon, eggs, English muffin, and orange juice. Hash brown. It's a cheap meal, but I get hungry on airplanes. Totally worth it. So there's another goal here. There's another part of this adventure and I'm, I'm trying to get a truck. Hopefully we're gonna buy a truck in Chicago. I've been searching high and low for a long time, really fell in love with the Ford F-150 Platinum. Saw one about 15 minutes from the airport. Hopefully this is it. And oh, by the way, it's good to have legendary friends. Pro Street legend, Kent Stotts, is picking me up from the airport. Thank you very much, Kent. Here we go. We have made it to Chicago. The flight was a little delayed, a little bit of a maintenance issue, but we are here. Great to be in Chicago. I got a lot of great friends here, and I'm excited to see the legend himself, Kent Stotts, the Pro Street legend, along with his son, Frankie. They are two of the greatest Pro Street racers ever. They've smashed so many records on Hondas. Wait, wait a minute. Are you, are you Pro Street legend, Kent Stotts? <laughs> What's Picking me up guys? in a Corvette? In a Corvette? Thank you, sir. I actually traded one of my Blackbirds for this. Kent, I should have known the record smasher on a Pro Street Honda would have something fast. 2,000 Corvette. And red. And red. <laughs> 500 horsepower. How much fun is this car? It's a lot of fun. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm riding from the airport in style. This is way better than Uber or Lyft. Thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> it. So, quick pit stop. Where am I now? I'm truck shopping. You never know what we're going to do on Cycle Drag. City is living up to its name. We're all seeing all kinds of weather here. So here's what I want to know from you guys. What's your favorite pickup truck and why? I'm not super brand loyal. Always kind of been a Ford guy, but I like Chevys. I like Dodge. What's your favorite pickup and why? All right, actually, I'm being coy with you guys a little bit. There's a specific truck here I'm looking for that I've been hunting down for a couple years. I've had my eye on them. I really like them. I hope they still have it. It was on the website as of yesterday. I don't know if it's still gonna be here. If it isn't, I guess I'm renting a car. Oh, baby, I think we found her. Oh, man, it is a Ford F-150 Platinum. I love these things. My very first pickup truck was a little black 2003 Ford Ranger when I was in college. This is like the granddaddy with all the bells and whistles, the Platinum. I fell in love with this truck a couple years ago. Let's see if we can make a deal with these guys. I can't believe somebody hasn't come out to me yet. I used to sell cars. We used to have an up position and we'd be fighting for it. They must be doing well. They must be busy. I'm gonna go in and see what's up. See if I can buy a truck. Boy, they got me shopping out here now. These, uh, these Ram Limiteds are nice too. I love it. Love the leather interior. I really want leather interior. Used to have a pickup truck with cloth seats. Definitely want to go to leather. It's not going to happen. They won't come down on price at all. They're about 5,000 higher than elsewhere. They're saying it's because it's Chicago. Hey, I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll rent a car.
All right, you deal with the curveball, you deal with the changes, we're gonna have to run a car to get to the dash for cash. Things aren't going quite according to plan here, but we are gonna get you to a drag race, I promise you that. Man, oh man, so I know what you're thinking. This is the YouTube video that wasn't. We choke on riding the bike. We pass on the truck we were supposed to buy, but let me tell you something about that truck. I used to sell cars. I thought it was a slam dunk. I thought I was gonna get it for a really good price. It was the last day of the month. It's been sitting there for 30 days. They were already high. They were willing to cut me no slack. In fact, it was higher than what was advertised online. I think the guy came down like two or 300 bucks. And I showed him a comparable truck, same year, 50,000 less miles in New Jersey for 5,000 less. And said, look, you guys gotta knock, we gotta, we gotta knock three grand off of this before we even get in that zone. And they said, nope, sorry, welcome to Chicago. I can't move the truck from this expensive area. So I get it, but uh, kids, let this be a lesson to you. Yeah, it was a pain in the butt. I had to rent a car. I had to book a return flight home still way better than getting pushed into a terrible financial decision. And I'll tell you, from a guy who has sold cars, my biggest piece of advice, do not just look at that monthly payment. Look at the total. Interest, the bottom line, that's the number that really matters. But anyhow, we're still gonna deliver. We're still gonna take you to the races. It's a little chilly, 39 degrees in Kalamazoo, but we are headed to the Super Bowl of sled racing. Two strokes. Oh man, this is gonna be awesome. US 131. Let's go get it in, guys. I'll tell you this, I love a challenge. I'm an extremist. I'm a wrestler. We love to do what people say we can't do. Not riding my bike was the smartest thing I could have done. 36 this morning in Kalamazoo. I would have froze on the Hayabusa. So I promise I still will do that trip. I'm gonna do it in the summer sometime, maybe go coast to coast, and I'm gonna do it with a very light load. I need to get a saddle bag, like I said, and uh, I want no parts of this cold weather. You can challenge me all you want on that. I don't wanna go anywhere on a Hayabusa when it's in the 30s. You don't get too long of a season up north, especially here, early October, and it hit 36 overnight in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Woo! Good news is we got a high of about 60 today. That'll be warm enough to race. It's gonna be an awesome event. I'm glad you guys are rolling with me. Cycle Drag on the road, on the quest to bring you the most impressive motorcycles and sleds in the world. Stroke fans, let's go. We got something to see. How about a 1972 S2350 triple? Let's go. Dad, tell me about this awesome bike. Well, it's, it's out of the garage for the first time in a long time. Is it ready to go? You got a surprise lap coming up. It's probably not ready to go, but how else is there? How else can you get it ready to go? Then very true. Make a pass and troubleshoot it from there, right? Very true. So, How's the oil level? I think we're a little bit low. We're gonna put a little bit in, and maybe that'll help that clutch a little bit. Tell me about some of the upgrades you have on this bike and some of the features. Those aren't stock chambers, as we know. 
Uh, those are, uh, you got, uh, the motor's been poured 20 over, 20 over Weiss goes. Okay. It's been ported, and there's, if you look, there's a plate underneath the cylinder to raise the transfer ports. So, uh, there was a gentleman named John Ritter, and uh, he actually built the pipes, too. And uh, for a limited uh, time, he had S2 parts available, and that looks like he got out of it. You know, S2 stuff was, uh, you know, when Stenko went away back in the 70s, you couldn't find it, so. This is special to you because your very first street bike was an S2350 blue one, right? I mean, what's it like having it back after all these years? It, it's it's funny because it's still a flashback at times. You know, you get, you, you're you working on some aspect of it or you're doing something and it just takes you back to being, you know, a kid. And uh, the other interesting aspect, uh, well, whatever, for me was, you know, the price for my first one was $935 out the door. That was the price on it. It was a, a leftover in 1974, January 74. Ever since that day, my racing number's been 935. It's remained 935. It's been on every bike I've ever raced. And, uh, I don't know. It was kind of so like cool. the start of everything, you know? That is so uh, cool. Really, uh, really uh, a lot of fun, these little two cycles. So. Well, you got one shot to get down the track here. What are you expecting? Can uh, we break the 15s? Uh, <laughs> we're going to try to get into 14s. Uh, into 14s will be impressive after a decade away. It's, it's going to be a one and done here. Beautiful S2350. Super Eliminator is open to four strokes as well. And here's one of the most unusual ZX14 power drag bikes we've ever seen and that's because the chassis is cut up off a GS. What is your name sir? Rick Steinert. And where are you from? Uh, Madison Heights, Michigan. Tell me about this wild build. Um, I bought um, uh, an 81 GPC from 1981 and it's still the original bike. I've owned it ever since. So. What made you want to fit a ZX-14 motor? Um, I, um, the old motor, the KZ motor, was just whipped out. There was nothing left to it, and it was a plug-in starter and all the stuff that you use for, you know, to make them fast. And um, the IDBA was out of business. Man Cup come up and stepped up with Super Eliminator, and so I supported the class with my Connie. And I decided uh, we need to, uh, I need to go racing. And I took the old motor apart, and it was just tired. And the wife says. Yeah, you can go racing again, but I'm not going with you. So it had to be pushed by the start. I gotta show you a sign that really nails home <laughs> and accentuates racing in the north. April to October. April to October, if you're lucky. If you're lucky. It's a little chilly right now, but we're getting it in in October. We're doing what we love to do. We're handing out some cycle drag decals. Thank you so much. Awesome. I gotta get to my bike, but I'll put these on for sure. Thank you very much. Here, hold that. That's worth a couple horsepower right there. I don't know about that, but okay. it's definitely worth the awesome. show. I'll put those on my bike. Good luck. As so many of you ask me, how can I get the stickers? How can I get the stickers? The best way is to see me at the races. I bring a stash, but they go quick. I think I'm down to two right now. Guys, what's your name? Liz. And. Mike. And. Kaden. And. Makaya. And. DeAndre. Where are you from? Flint, Michigan. Do you watch Where's Cycle Michigan? Drag? All the time. Good luck. What's your name? Katie. Well, where, Katie and Katie, where are you from? Whitmore Lake. And do you watch Cycle Drag? We do. Thank you so much. Yes. What's your name? Ryan Wolf. Where are you from? Grand Bank. You watch, you watch Cycle Drag? I do. You are the man. Nice crumb. What in the world is this? <laughs>
It is final time and the dash for cash. Let's meet the players. I gotta say congratulations. They're revving for you, Nick Christmas. That's all for you. Yeah. It is Christmas. It's Christmas, Christmas in October. Came early. <laughs> it's chilly as heck. You win the dash for cash. You also yeah. win the bike sled shootout. How are you so on today? Oh, uh, it's not me, man. It's this bike. This bike is a deadly machine. Between my friends and family that helped me build this bike, I wouldn't be here without them. What do you think it is about this bike that makes it so consistent? I, I honestly, I. It's just the combination between both of us. Like, I, I connected this bike. This bike, she Absolutely. has been with me since day one, and I Absolutely. love this bike. Well, speaking of with you since day one, who's this lovely lady over here? This is Allison. Excellent. And who do we have behind you? Uh, Joyce and Jesse Baker. Right. How proud are you of this guy? Extremely. Oh, this, is, so proud. this is an extended family. I yes. love him to death. Very There's cool. more back home. Did you guys have a good time this weekend? Oh, excellent. Oh, excellent. How could you not? Right. Congratulations. Anybody you'd like to thank? Uh, the Samoras, uh, yes. Mike McCormick, all those guys, Tabitha and Rick Tabin Poole. Rick. You guys are awesome. Congratulations to Rick Poole winning the no box side at Indy, $18,000. Wow. Well, congratulations to you. Great weekend. Woo. Thank you, sir. Woo. Well, that is the end of our marathon weekend. I got my coffee ready to go. It's 46 degrees. It's freezing, but we had an awesome race. Big thanks to Bellman Oil Schnitz Racing, the Dash for Cash. It was wonderful, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. We're going to continue our quest to bring you the most impressive motorcycles. You never know where we'll end up. Thanks for subscribing and sharing, and we'll keep it going. See you next time. All right, weary traveler, we have made it to Phoenix, Arizona, and I'll tell you, the sweatshirt is coming off after being on all weekend. It is so much warmer. I'll tell you, this was a great weekend of racing, but it was cold. Hats off to everybody who stuck it out. It was cold. It's so much warmer here. What an advantage people have. I think my, I think I got a sinus headache from being out there all weekend, but uh, it's crazy. It was still worth it because we saw some great racing. Well, this is certainly a nice touch at John Wayne Airport. I'll tell you guys, that was an awesome race, but here I am straight through to Santa Ana, John Wayne Airport. It's like 80 degrees. It's only 1030 in the morning. It's beautiful. My sweatshirt's off, my ice cream headache from the cold all weekend starting to go away. I love the Northeast, but I've been spoiled to experience some Southern and West Coast winters. I don't know if I can go back. I really, I really don't, man. This is just, I'm a warm weather guy. I'm a motorcycle guy. I don't like the motorcycles in the garage six months out of the year. Let me know what you think about this. I know the price is right in a lot of places in the Northeast, especially where I'm from Pittsburgh, very affordable, but whew, six months of cold. I don't know. And I again want to emphasize how happy I am that I decided not to take my Busa. I would have froze. I never would have made it. There's no way. There's no way. I don't have the uh, proper heated grips, heated gloves. I don't have hand guards. So my hands would have gotten numb really, really quickly. I've ridden in 30 degrees before and you only have so long before you lose clutch and throttle hands. So that was a good move. I would have been in a bad situation renting a truck to get home probably.
Motorcycle fanatics, thank you so much for watching. Please hit subscribe, like, leave us your feedback. We never want you to miss a video. In fact, speaking of videos, here's another video I want you to check out. You know if there's anything fast motorcycles, we're in. Cycle drag rolls on.